Having a basic familiarity of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, ES6, or ECMAScript will be useful for this tutorial, but isn't required. At the end of this tutorial, your web page should look something like this, vaguely inspired by Spotify's homepage. I'm now going to open up my app made from NPX Create React app inside Visual Studio Code. I have a tutorial on how to get this set up from NPX that I'll link in the description below. Um, to open up a terminal so that we can start and stop the development server, uh, in Visual Studio Code you can go to View Terminal and type in npm start. To stop the server from running, you can use Control c or you can click on this trash button. Don't worry, you can close the terminal using the X button and the process will run in the background. Just don't forget it's still running and make sure to stop it later. Usually, however, I just keep the terminal open. Let's go back to our code and edit our web application to make it our own. Open up source, then app.js, and at first glance, this might seem overwhelming. We're going to focus on the lines starting with function app app is what's called a jsx element you might notice that it looks a lot like html jsx is an extension of javascript that allows ui engineers to write javascript code that looks like a cleaner version of html with jsx we can do things like import an svg and embed it in curly brackets like in this image tag here on line 9. we can also add class names that are defined here in app.css i'm really loving spotify's homepage right now so let's start our lookalike i'm actually going to delete everything except for the div that we're going to return and the image tag for now, I'm going to comment out the image. To do this, I highlight whatever code I want to save for later and just do command slash, and that will automatically put the comment formatting around the code. You can do this in CSS files too, if you'd like to save all of those styles. When it comes to personal projects, I'm kind of a code hoarder. I just like keep everything that's there. At this point, you probably have something that looks like this. It's going to produce a white page. And the first thing I want to make is this navigation bar that Spotify has and so what this really is is a header component with an unordered list of links um, what I sometimes do when I look at sites that I'm thinking about reproducing is I go to the inspect tab and I just did right click and inspect and just take a look at how um, the website is formatted so as you can see here they have this div container and then inside here is another uh, div which is the logo and then they have this nav element with an unordered list which is the ul element right here okay so cool so let's go ahead and do that directly in app.js i'm going to make a header element and then inside that i'm going to have a nav html element ul and i'm just going to put home and profile warnings are okay we just get this Nice little unordered list. Now let's take this a step further and uh, reactify it. To fully utilize JSX, let's make our navigation bar a component. Make a new component called navigation bar with these exact capitalized letters. This is uh, the way of defining React components with this casing. And then I'm just going to use ECMA 6 arrow syntax to define a function. So it's just empty parentheses since we're not passing in any parameters or props yet, an arrow, and then brackets. So we could actually make this use ECMA6 um, syntax too by doing const app is equal to parentheses, but uh, that's not necessary. So here we are, we have our navigation bar, and then inside here, we're going to have a return parentheses and then inside here we're actually going to move all of our HTML components so I'm just doing command X over here and then we just have to use navigation bar inside just like this and then you can either write it like this or you can do a space slash and then a uh, greater than sign save that and it should look the exact same just to reiterate one more time what we just did is we defined a function using ECMA 6 notation where this function returns a JSX element 
or React component, which in this case is our header and our nav and our unordered list. We want to take it one step further and organize app.js because keeping everything inside this one file is unsustainable as our application grows. So to do this, let's make a, in, a single components folder in source, components, and inside components, I'm going to make another folder called navigation bar that will match the exact capitalization of this element. Inside navigation bar, I'm going to define two files for now, index.js and navigation bar.js. And so what this index file is going to do is take the component here. So let's make our component first, import react from react. This uh, tells the compiler that this is a react file. And then we're going to actually just take this entire thing from app.js. I'm going to copy it and paste it. And then I'm going to add at the bottom export default navigation bar. Great. So you might think, well, why do we have this index.js file when we can import it directly from this file? And out of personal preference, I tend to like these this like folder arrangement. Uh, and you'll see why in a sec. So I'm going to import navigation bar from and then this uh, folder and then I'm going to do export default navigation bar and then inside app.js I'm actually going to delete this and let's see if it will auto import I have this auto import ext extension so it says import navigation bar from components navigation bar you'll notice that it doesn't have navigation bar slash navigation bar.js. It is just the folder components navigation bar. And that is because of this index.js file. It allows React to know where to grab this file since this navigation bar folder is now a module. Now that you have a greater understanding of how to make a component, how to make it a module, I'm gonna quickly run through uh, the styles for this navigation bar. I'm going to define navigation bar.css and uh, paste in the following styles. I'll pause here for a moment. Uh, width 100% is going to make it take up the whole width of the browser. Opacity 0.75, that will change it from stark black color to this like kind of transparent transparent looking black color. Color white is for the text. I know that's kind of confusing. The next two lines are for fixing the navigation bar to the top. I know right now we don't have a lot of content on our page, but this will come in handy later. Once I'm done making my CSS styles, I'm going to import it in navigation bar.js uh, by just doing import dot slash navigation bar dot CSS. Uh, app.js does something similar. Last but not least, I have to add the class name itself to the header HTML element in navigation bar. This of course matches the class name in the CSS file. Uh, after saving that, it should show up with this black background. Next, we're moving on to the hero, which is that giant like pinkish looking thing from the beginning in the middle of the page. Very similar process. I'm defining a hero folder or module uh, with a hero.js file, importing React in the hero.js file, defining uh, the hero as a new const that is a function, um, returning a diff. Sometimes VS Code will produce these errors saying that the like import doesn't exist, so I just closed and reopened index.js and I got rid of that red error. In app.js, I'm now going to import my hero, and unfortunately it's hidden behind our navigation bar, but it is there, so <laughs> I'm going to add some styling so that this looks a little more poppy, you know, has a color. And then for that gradient, um, like colorful looking background, I'm really into this site called cssgradient.io. You can like drag around and choose like what the different colors are that go between them. It's really cool. Uh, so yeah, I just picked this like kind of pinkish looking gradient, pasted it into my CSS file. I'm adding a height and width of 100% for our div.
cool. So still hidden, kind of, you know, looking a little cramped. Um, what I'm going to do is add padding. It adds like some more room around it and actually like takes up some more space, like looks a more like a hero. So I'm doing 20% on the X axis, 20% on the Y axis, and that'll um, actually add padding all around our div. So there you go. Uh, don't forget to save your work with Git. It's super easy in VS Code. Go to the Git tab, uh, type in a commit message, which is like kind of like a save message. So I'm typing navbar and hero, and then I'm doing command enter to make a commit. And then I'm clicking on that um, cloud button on the lower left hand corner to actually publish it to a GitHub private repository. There might be some extra steps if you haven't done this before in VS Code. So thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Oh my gosh, uh, I'm so grateful that you're here. You know, comment below um, if you got to the end. I really want to know. And <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Stay safe.